Good evening, everyone. So tonight is our Blue Christmas service, and I am recording beforehand just because I will be going home to be with my children afterwards. But I wanted to take a few moments to spend this time with you all and to uh, give this opportunity for the Up Close Sermon uh, that we didn't have last year because I was a little too emotionally overwhelmed uh, being the first year without my husband. So as we turn towards our gospel lesson for tonight, would you please join me in prayer? Holy God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Still any voice within us but your own. Be with us this night as we sit in your presence as we rest here, as we come needing your love and your light and your warm, comforting embrace in the midst of so many difficult and hard things. Speak your peace to us, speak your grace, and most of all, speak your hope. And now may the words of our mouths and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So our gospel lesson for this evening comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 68. And it is John the Baptist's father who is speaking. So listen now to God's word for us this night. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for God has looked favorably upon his people, and redeemed them. God has raised up for us a mighty Savior in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us. Thus God has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that God swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve God without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I still remember that morning just like it was all those years ago. Brad and I were waking up that Christmas Eve morning, getting ready for worship that night, when my phone rang. And it was my mom calling me, which wasn't a good sign. She said the words, and I felt my knees beside the bed, dropping my phone and weeping, as I had all those years ago, that day that he had caught me. He had caught me as I wept at injustice as a teenager. But now I was weeping because my dad, my bonus dad who had stepped in to help raise me when my father died, who had been in my life for over 20 years, he had died. And all of it washed over me. We hadn't made it before he died. He had, he had only gone on hospice the day before, but he had been gone for months with his mind dissolved into dementia. But what do we do now? Do we go? What, what about mom? No, no, he would want me to lead worship tonight because I'm in charge of the children's service and dad loved kids. And we did wake up this Christmas to meet Jesus and Santa Claus, so... And I wept, and I wept, and I wept as a different set of arms, strong arms, my husband's arms, enfolded me. 
I'm dreaming tonight of a place I love even more than I usually do. And although I know it's a long road back, I promise you I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. Please have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree. Christmas Eve you'll find me where the love light gleams. I'll be home for Christmas if only in my dreams. Sometimes the Face that Christmas inhabits, it's really hard, it's messy, or it hurts, or it's lonely. Sometimes it's all of the above. And that really is okay. Because how do you fake happy when it feels like someone just sucker punched you in the gut? And how do you feign jolliness when your world feels like it is closing in around you or it just fell apart? Where do you run when the lights aglow are plastic and you're looking for something far more real? This week I was catching up with some colleagues and we were talking about some things, you know, life, the church, hard stuff that keeps happening all around us. And somehow this slogan came out of our conversation. Welcome to the church. There is still some hope left. And we all roared with laughter because even in the church, there are moments when it feels like all is lost. But then, then you see that real fire and the real light, those candles shining real light shining through, and you hear God's voice whisper again. Several years after my dad's death, I, as I prepared for that same beloved children's service, it was actually a children's nativity service at my church in South Carolina, I heard someone call my name that I never expected. His name was Gus. And he was a friend. And when he called, I ran down the stairs, threw my arms around him in a hug, and then exclaimed, what are you doing here? Do they know? He responded, Ashley does. You see, Gus was a colonel in the United States Army who had been away since before Thanksgiving, and we hadn't expected to see him again until after the new year. So off we headed to the third floor as I quickly popped my head around the door where his son was changing into his costume and said, Alex, there's someone here to see you. And then I got his mom, and I don't think I've ever heard such a happy dad in my life, nor seen a kid run so fast into arms waiting to catch them. That night, I realized I had seen a true Christmas miracle, and it still gives me more hope than I can say. Because sometimes the best way to find the light of Christmas is to get to be part of someone else's Christmas dream or wish coming true. Other times, it is by simply reaching out and ensuring that everyone within your awareness is checked on and loved on and knows they matter. And then other times, it's about finding the right person to ride out the storm with. Because the honest truth is that 
there are some things in life that are just going to be really, really difficult. There is no way around that. But God never leaves us through those valleys, especially not at Christmas. And I am betting there is someone out there who will stick with you here on earth, too. Because as Kate McAllister said, Christmas is the season of perpetual hope. And far more importantly, Gospels remind us that the Christ child is God with us. A love, a power coming into the world that is stronger than anything the world can throw at it. Not shadows, not hatred, not pain or suffering, not even death. And by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us and give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and guide our feet into the way of peace. Because, my friends, when this light that Christmas light shines. Nothing can overcome it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>